by Thor. You surprised me. Oh, you probably already know who I am. The sagas already tell of my great destiny. Everyone fear my name. Olaf Smellybeard. I am master of all berserkers, champion of ice skating, womanizer of Bergen, king of the ocean, god of seafaring! But I really need a ship. Okay, let's build a Viking long ship. I'm gonna start by the deck, using a very thin but sturdy cardboard I scavenge at work. You can also buy them in bulk in some stores. So my ship's gonna be 25 centimeters long for about 7 centimeters wide, but you can do this ship with the size you want. I'm gonna draw perpendicular lines every 2.5 centimeters to have some kind of grid that will aid me to do a very symmetrical ship. Now I'm gonna draw this by hand, but you can definitely print uh, you know, a template online if you don't want to bother or if you're afraid to. You want to do something symmetrical. I just wanted something that was uh, really adapted to the sizes I want and the proportions I wanted. The proportions of this ship aren't 100% realistic. It's meant for tabletop practicality. So here you can see the size with a miniature, it's about right for what I want. So I'm cutting it out. Trimming a little bit. And now I'm gonna use coffee stirrers to make the wooden planking of the deck. Try to favor ones with an interesting texture. I'm also you're gonna use kebab skewers uh, to do some wooden dowels to make the beams that are gonna come across the deck. And we're gonna use some wood glue. Now I'm gonna cut the coffee stirrers to make the small planks to make the floor of the deck. I'm taking as reference the larger ship we found. Usually the planks were small, because you could actually remove some of them. In the Viking Age, the ballast of third ship were just stones set at the bottom of the ship. But there were also compartments where you could store some valuables, like, you know, swords, uh, armaments, or, you know, valuables that couldn't stand the harshness of the sea, so you would put them under the planks. But this is gonna be some work. If you're gonna go faster, uh, or you're doing a smaller ship, you could also use the whole length of the coffee steer and put the wooden dowels, the beams, afterwards on top. I just wanted to go for something a little more historical, but you could definitely go faster by using the whole length of the coffee steer. Each time I end up a row and that the glue is mostly set, I'm gonna press down with a metal ruler and remove the edges just to have a very clean edge. So it's gonna be seamless with the beam I'm going to add. When the glue is dry, I'm gonna use the cutting knife just to remove the pieces of wood that are overhanging. There you go, we got ourselves a deck. Wait, stop. Here I did a mistake. As you can see, I'm using the deck I built as a template to know the dimension of the straights I'm gonna do on each side. Now this seemed like a good idea at the time, but I didn't foresee that the straights would end up a little too short. You see, the straights are building higher and rounder at the stern and at the stem of the ship. So I was forced later on to cut a little bit of the deck to make sure the strakes would fit. So I would suggest you adding a little more length to the strakes template right here. Just, you know, maybe one centimeter more or one or two centimeters, depending on the curvature you want to give to the front of your ship. So here you can see I'm using the prototype of the ship that I built as reference, but you can do the curvature you want. The only main concern is that, that it has to be symmetrical. So I'm using one side as a template to make the other, just to achieve something very symmetrical. And this is my template. Now using a small anvil as a anchor points, I'm going to use this template to draw all the overlapping boards of the strakes. I'm going to make sure to have at least five or six uh, complete strakes, but I only need a short length for the front and the back of the ship. You'll see why afterwards. So I'm gonna draw the outlines of the strakes of one side of the ship and of the other. I'm gonna cut them. Then using some wood glue, I'm gonna set them on top of each other. And I'm gonna make sure half the planks are overlapping. There you go. Then I'm gonna cut a straight line from one edge to another. 
there you go I've got one side there you go as you can see it fits pretty well but as you can see it's too just to have a curvature in front of the ship I'm also going to cut out the part of the keel that is going to be sticking out of the water on the front and on the back of the ship. I want something thick, so I'm going to glue several layers of cardboard together. Two of them are going to be thinner at the center, you're going to see why. Because I want to be able to glue each side of the strakes of the ship to the stem post. So I want some kind of hinge. The center pieces are not going to move, but I'm going to open the sides like wings. And I'm gluing them to the front of the ship. So you can't see this step because I haven't filmed it, but you can see I put a curvature to the front of the ship. I'm really happy about those small little clamps. They're really useful for the craft. There you go. I've got the strakes. And I'm going to try to fit in the deck inside, having a lot of trouble doing it. Now I cut out this small triangle in front and at the back of the deck just to make sure that the stem post and the stern posts could fit. That is normal, but I also had to remove a little bit of matter to make sure it holds. And it worked. So I'm gonna add some glue on the sides to make sure it adheres. Here as you can see, I'm adding elongated uh, triangles of cardboard at the stern and at the stem of the ship. As you can see, I'm adding some small wooden parts just to make sure that the junction is more seamless. But if you take into consideration the fact that the strakes have to be longer, you won't have this problem and you'd end up with something more regular. Now we're gonna be doing the mast fish. It's a nice piece of engineering that was used to set the mast and to remove it and to hold it easily. So I'm using foam to do this. So I tried with different materials, but the foam ended up the best solution. So it does look like a fish or a bow tie. Now I want my ship to be modular and I want the mast to be removable. So I'm gonna drill a hole into the mast fish and glue in a straw. The mast will be encased in the straw. It will hold it, but it will be removable. So I use some mud podge to glue this, because the first time the wood glue wouldn't work very well. I would suggest actually using some strong glue instead, it'll hold better. I'm also gonna put on this small uh, piece that is overhanging, I don't remember the name of the piece, but it's quite visible so I'm gonna add it. It's a removable piece that is supposed to hold on the mast in place when it's set. Now I choose when I'm gonna set it, mostly in the middle. I just make sure that the wooden dowel wouldn't get in the way of the mast. And I'm just gonna trim this place to make sure to have an exact fit. There you go. So as you can see, I'm gonna use a shop stick to make the mast. Now to do the yard, I chose a slightly smaller dowel and I'm gonna do it about 15 centimeters wide. Now I'm trimming it with sandpaper, both to obtain a round section, but also to have a nice wooden texture. I'm also gonna use the sandpaper on the mast. I'm gonna use this very nice small drill offered by my dad to make a puncture at the top of the mast and I'll add toothpick on top. Now let's go do the sail. The only requirement is that it's rather thin and colorful. Ships were expensive in these days and Viking or a group of Vikings that were rich enough to, you know, undertake the construction of a ship uh, would want to, to, to show it with pride. So usually the sails were very colorful. Uh, the colors that were most favored by Vikings were often blue and red. Now you could find many other colors, but blue and red were very common. So I chose blue. Now, if you are using linen, be very careful with the weaving of the cloth, otherwise it will tear up. But if you're using cotton, you probably won't have this issue. 
I just didn't happen to have a blue cotton textile at home. And I'm going to be sewing the cell to the yard using this thick thread. As you can see, I'm alternating. The thread is going through the sail one time, then another time only around the yard, then the next time through the sail, etc, etc. Now I'm just securing the thread on the yard with some strong glue. Also added a little bit of rope on top to be able to set the sail onto the mast. This way. Now I want to give some curvature to this sail. So I used a round container, here it's a ink bottle, and build up a slope out of chopsticks. As you can see I'm soaking up the sail with very diluted white glue, but it's a mistake later on I ended up using almost pure glue just to make sure it's set properly. So I suggest you guys leave it to dry somewhere else so you can actually work. So I'm gonna do another version of the yard with the sail actually rolled up, as you can see here. So I'm gonna do a sort of fan fold and use the rubber bands to hold it. And I'm gonna squeeze in the yard. And using the same method, one thread around the yard, one thread around the sail, one thread around the yard, etc. Now let's do the rudder out of parza wood. Obviously I'm only going to do the part that is sticking out of the water. Drilling a hole in the mill. And I'm going to draw the hinges that are going to be holding the rudder in place. So we've got one hinge at the top and one down. So this is the bottom piece. It's actually a rope that is working as a hinge on these kind of ship. So my first idea was to make something modular, something that could move around an axis, around the, the rope, the twine, but I ended up gluing it to get something a little more sturdy. Finally, putting in the handle. And there you go, pretty close from the original reference. As you can see, we can set a miniature, works pretty well. Now before building up the mast, let's have fun craft some small ship accessories. Let's start with the anchor. Now we found some iron anchors on Viking ships, but most of the time anchors were just a large stone that was jammed in between a large Y wooden piece. So that's what I'm gonna build. I'm cutting some small pieces and I'm dipping them in hot water just to make sure that the fibers of the wood are going to be able to be bent later on without breakage. When everything is dry I'm going to glue the pieces together and jam in a small stone. As you can see, I even took time to do the wedges that were used to block the stones in between the wire frame. This does take a little bit of dexterity. Now let's get to a fun part, because the Viking warship is obviously going to have some shield rows on the sides, right? Now, we could paint all of them individually, but this would take a hell of a time. So I actually use a technique that was used by a friend of the craft called Tonio La Grenouille, that you can find on uh, the Tabletop Crafter Guilds. We were talking a few months back about shields, because I had painted my Viking Warband, 
and took quite a big amount of time painting the shells by hand. And he was looking for a faster, easier way to, you know, shield up a huge warband. So he actually used images found on internet of, you know, patterns of shields. Uh, and it ended up looking really cool and, you know, very fast to, to, to do. So this is obviously the technique I used. He sent me one of his templates, but I ended up building my own because I was in need of many, many shields. So if you're going to build a piece that you're going to sell, um, better ask first, uh, you know, for the designs. When you take pictures, just don't just steal them like that. But, you know, I'm doing it for a hobby purpose. So if you're just doing it for yourself, you can just take the images for internet and, you know, print them. In any case, I printed them and, you know, glued them on the thin cardboard I used previously for the ship. So first I'm going to cut out a cardboard uh, strap. And then I'm going to use a paper clip folded that way to make some sort of hook that is going to be able to block a strap on the side of the ship. Now later on I found an even easier way. You can use um, uh, an old plastic card and cut out uh, some small pieces. Uh, then, you know, um, using a liner you can bend them to have this same kind of... Um, to have the same kind of hinge, the same kind of hook that you can set on the sides. But this will work nonetheless. Once the glue is dry, you'll have to cut them individually, you know, that will take a little bit of time. But once you get the hang of it, you'll be pretty fast and you'll get quite efficient afterwards when you get the right motion. Now, how are we going to do the shield boss that is in the middle of the shield, the umbo protecting the hand? Well, I'm glad you ask. The easiest way I found was to use uh, the small glue gun and put a very small dab of glue at the middle of the shield. Now, obviously, you'll find out that the bead of the glue gun is going to have a drop shape. So the idea is to use a lighter and under the heat, the drop is going to set and be nicely and nice and round. Now, there is a learning curve to get more efficient, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty fast. It does take some time because I chose to make a lot of shields, but it works pretty well. Then just paint the umbo with a metallic paint, and the only thing left to do is to glue it on the strap. There you go, removable modular shield rose. Still working on options, let's do some ores. Now if you can find some miniature ores, just, you know, use them. But as you can see, I use some toothpicks and remove half of its thickness at one of the ends and uh, added some small parts of coffee stirrers to make the tip of the ores. Then I trimmed the tip of the ore to have something a bit more flat, something a bit more regular. Now this took time as well, so if you don't want to do this option or can find an alternative, well, use it. I didn't find any. As you can see, I'm now drilling with my Dremel to make the ore holes. Now you could do this prior to this step, before assembling the ship. I just did it at that step just to make sure that the holes would be set in between the shields. Now I'm going to shorten the oars. Don't forget, this is for tabletop. So I don't want the oars to be a, a hindrance during gameplay. Now I'm going to be painting the whole thing in a very short while. So I don't want to forget any parts. I decided to add some reinforcements on the mast fish piece building out of foam. There you go. So for the base coat, I'm gonna use the burnt sienna mixed in with just as much Mod Podge. This will harden the craft. 
So I'm mixing it with a toothpick and then I'm coating the whole ship. Now before painting the inside of the ship I decided to add, to add some plankings to the platforms at the stern and at the stem of the ship because it looked a little too plain. Painting the inside it's pretty satisfying to see how these different pieces get a color. Now the burnt sienna is a bit red, but this came out really red on the image, but it is actually more brown in real life. In any case, I'm also painting the oars, the yards, the different pieces, the anchor, and then I'm gonna do a dry brush to do the highlights. Now to do the highlights, I'm gonna mix in some burnt sienna with some yellow and some whites, about equal parts, just to have a lighter tone. And I'm dry brushing it everywhere, on all the pieces. Looks pretty nice. Finally, I used an ink wash, just you know, to get in the recesses and to get a bit more contrast. So I used an ink. I use an Army Painter Strong Tone, but you know, you can use whatever wash you want. The only thing it has to do is to set into the recess to give nice shadows and to give a better contrast to the piece. So let's finish with the set of ropes that are going to be holding uh, the mast in place. I'm gonna use this twine again, because it looks pretty natural, it looks like rope. And I'm also gonna use these beads to do the pulleys. Um, now these beads are very specific, because there is a rim in the mill. But if you can find these, uh, you could use some regular beads, it should work as well. So there are two pulleys on this system. So first I'm gonna glue and knot the first one this way. There you go, always securing with a dab of glue once I've done the knots. Then I'm going to take a shorter thread and glue it inside the next pulley. And then I'm going to thread it through the first one. I'm going to cut the excess of rope and then glue it inside the other beads hole. Finally, I'm going to take a small straw, a thread, and I'm going to make a small ring set on the bottom pulley. Always securing with a dab of glue. And there you go. Now obviously there are many of them on the real ship. Now, I chose to do four of them on the sides of the ship. One for stay, holding up the mast from the stern and from the stem. These ones are just with one pulley. Now, I want the mast to be removable. So I'm going to use an elastic string for the last part of the rope that is going to be fixed to the mast. So I'm going to do a small ring with this elastic string. I'm going to knot it on top of the rope. The only thing I have to make sure is that there is a slight tension to the rope because I want the rope to, to be tense, not too tense, but I want it to be straight. There you go, you can see all my ropes with the elastic string on top. So I'm using some very short toothpick uh, ends to make some anchor points. These are going to be set uh, towards uh, the floor of the deck, so I'm going to be able to, to strap on uh, the elastic ropes and they were gonna they're gonna be able to hold you know with a small tension they're gonna be straight but they're gonna be very easy to uh, to take off using the elasticity of the um, of the elastic uh, of the elastic string I'm gluing all the elastic straps on the mast, except for the force day, because I want it to be removable to be able to set the sail. Now I'm going to paint the toothpick that serves as anchor points, and I'm going to put some mud podge to harden the craft furthermore. And there you go. Nice mast secured with uh, these ropes. Huh? Uh, with the forestay, uh, with the shroud, the hull yard. It's got a nice look, but it won't hinder gameplay. If you want to take it off, it's really fast, as you can see. So, pretty useful. So as you can see, it's fairly easy to set it back in. And to set the sail, and then set the forestay. So we're at the end of the tutorial. The only thing left to do is the figurehead that is going to be set on the stem post. So I'm going to show you how I did it, uh, but it asks for some dexterity. So if you're used to doing miniatures and sculpting, you can definitely do it 
um, out of uh, green stuff or some other type of, you know, metal and clay, hardening clay or epoxy. If you're not very comfortable with your dexterity, uh, you can also kit bash, you know, take some monster heads um, from miniatures and kit bash something. So I'm going to show you how I did it, but um, you can do it several other ways. So I'm going to use the plastic tubing um, of the metal wire to sculpt some rims and to get some details on the head. I also use some small beads to make the eyes some kind of googly eyes, get a little bit of volume. But what really interested me was to have removable uh, figures for the front of the ship. And that serves many purposes. First, in tabletop logic, it's great because if you change the head of the ship, the figure in front, you actually change the identity of the ship. You know, you can change the sail and can change the figurehead and it becomes another ship, you know, with another name and another history. So I want it to be removable uh, for gameplay. But also, even if it's not very well known, these figureheads were very often removable. Contrary to public opinions, these heads weren't destined to frighten the enemy or the, the, the defenders, the Vikings who were pillaging or anything like that. Uh, the heads were actually meant to frighten the Lanvator, so the, the, the spirits, the land spirits protecting an area. So you put up this figurehead in front of your ship to scare off. The, the spirit that was protecting the land you wanted to invade. And that's also the reason why it could be removed, because often you removed it when you paid a visit to, uh, to, to a friend or an ally. Otherwise, it would have uh, attacked and put in danger the spirit protecting their land. So historically, it was removable in many cases. And also for tabletop purposes, it's very interesting. So I built a rim out of thick paper just to make sure I was I was going to be able to encase the figurehead on the stem post. The only thing left to do was to paint uh, the figurehead with the same technique I used for the whole boat. But I also used some white on the teeth of the dragon head and some gold paint for the tongue and the eyes of the beast. And we're done. So here you can see the ship display with a few miniatures and a few accessories. So I'm going to remove the Viking so we can show the rest of the ship. So I can remove the force stay, and that's going to enable me to remove uh, the sail and change sail, put the open sea sail or open sea. The only thing I have left to do is to, to put back the force stay. Really easy to do, as you can see. There you go. But as you can see, you can also remove the whole mast by pulling down the strings, given there is an elastic piece of string uh, on top of the ropes. And you can remove the whole mast. You can also remove the shields row. There you go. And you can change the figurehead at your leisure. So here's our small anchor. And you can set up your ship pretty fast. There you go. Ship rows. The mast. the sail, and there you go. Almost forgot you got the oars as well. Uh, now these take a little time to be set, so I didn't do it. And there you go, you have a Viking longship.
I hope you liked the tutorial. If you want to see more videos, subscribe and uh, don't forget to click the little bell icon to get notifications. And hopefully I'll see you soon for another tutorial. Juan Vader signing off.